This is the Diaton Roma F5 V2 and this quad right here is one of the best value for money pre-built FPV drone that you can buy in the market in 2021. This drone costs $270 for the analog plug and play version which can go up to $290 to $300 depending on what receiver that you will use. You can also buy the power kit version for $230. Now you might be thinking, what is a power kit version? Let me tell you. So the power kit version is the setup that doesn't come with a VTX and camera. So what that means to you is that you can plug in any compatible VTX and camera whether it may be HD or analog, depending on your preference or your budget or whatever you have. So the one that I got here is actually a power kit version because I'm planning to put in an air unit which I extracted from my old quad and pair it up with my DJI goggles because, because why not? It's an awesome setup, you know? When I first opened the box, I was actually amazed by the amount of spare parts that it came with. So it came with a whole lot of information cards, battery straps, lipo pad, a whole lot of M3 and M2 screw, wiring harnesses, a whole lot of wiring, wiring harnesses, and it came with a set of Ethics S5 props, which is not bad, which is it's actually a decent prop. And one little detail that is actually amazing is all these little labels that I came in with, which is good for beginners as well as seasoned pilots. So the first thing that I did was I opened up the frame and wire up my air unit, which wasn't too hard at all because the flight controller has a plug and play harness for the air unit. Then I soldered a crossfire receiver, then tested on beta flight receiver and mode stab that it actually works. So this squad comes pre-built with Mamba F722 flight controller and a 50 amp BL Heli 32 ESC, which is actually not cheap at all. This is a good stack really. So the motors are 2306.5 2450 kV. So obviously this is a 4S setup. And these motors are Unibel, which is which is substantially durable for a for a freestyle quad. And that's not cheap at all. It's, it is almost a premium motors in my opinion. And this motors got a very unique texture in which is which is nice to have really. It also comes in with a built-in buzzer and GPS. So you don't have to worry about losing your quad when you fail safe from far away where you launch. So after I tested in beta flight receiver and mode stab that everything works as it should it's already time for a test flight so in this flight test i'm gonna be flying it like how i usually fly my five inch drones which is a mix of cinematic cruising and a little bit of freestyle as well if you can see the subtitles down below i purposely just left out the, the time the battery the latency and the bit rate which i think is the only things that are important you're gonna see that this flight ends at 4 minutes and 30 seconds but I landed on a very low voltage um, rating which was around 12 volts which I do not recommend because that would kill your battery that's not healthy for your battery well anyway I would say you could with this with my type of flying which is a mix of cinematic and freestyle you would usually get 4 minutes of flight time which is which is pretty usual for a 5 inch setup right, uh, well for freestyle anyway so you, you can see the flips and rolls that I did there it, it pretty much handled the, the prop wash really well we can still, you can still see a little bit of prop wash but does it really matter to you? It's all about how how much it matters to you. For for me, when I was flying this, I didn't really care about the prop wash, the amount of prop wash that was present. I thought it was minimal to to almost non noticeable. So right here in this part, I would change the video to the DJI goggles DVR again because right just after a few seconds here. The, I'm gonna crash the drone just right there but I, I regain control r right away that's a little bit of a crash test there with, with, which we can say that it did handle it well at that moment so the reason why I transferred to the goggles DVR because when I look when I review the footage in the GoPro the angle of the GoPro is not set right anymore 
and this is one thing that i i don't like about this type of gopro mount that it came in with I mean, because when you when you crash it and and regain control like just what i did there you most likely have the gopro in a different angle now because it's not in a secure mount like a full mount like what we usually use in a freestyle drone like a 3d printed mount i would say so right here i'm just showing you guys how it handles the type of flying that I usually do which is a cinematic and freestyle combination more more towards cinematic slow cruising and but right here I will do a, a juicy flick which is not the best juicy flick at all but it's just for test purposes anyway another juicy flick and you would see a little bit of prop wash there as well this is the part where I started to do a little bit more of freestyle handles the turns really well the flips and turns I mean it was pretty locked in in that turn there I would have landed around 14 if it was a normal flight but this one I just I just forgot I, I just enjoyed much flying and kept flying and it's, it's notice oh 12.3 volts so in the next flight I'm gonna show you where it crashed where I crashed my drone and it broke the arms and that's it that's the that's the crash there that break the arms I'm gonna show you the replay and a little bit of slow-mo there so you can see the angle how it crashed you would see it pretty much crashed sideways so it's it landed on its arms for sure like with a slow-mo there you can confirm that so now you might be wondering why I said that this is one of the best pre-built drones that you can buy in 2021 even though the arms broke on a relatively light crash well, I would say that even that crash seemed light and minor, that drone did land on the certain arm that broke. What might look like a light crash might have been actually a really hard crash if you factor in the angle of impact. So you might want to ask the question, who is this for? I would say this is not for someone who is just trying to get into FPV. Definitely not for beginners. I'd say this is for someone who's already have that confidence of flying the 5 inch quad but does not have the time or doesn't want to build one for themselves. If you're that person, then this will suit you well. Let me know your questions down in the comments and I will try my best to respond. See you in the next one.